Hi friends, I am Sam of IMF Osh State Medical University. In last topic, we were discussing about cardiac glycosides. And today, we will be discussing about antihypertensive drugs. What are antihypertensive drugs? The major role which plays in age factor is hypertension, which is the main reason of blood pressure. Increase in blood pressure. First of all, what is blood pressure? Blood pressure is a term which pressure or tension pressing against the blood vessel wall. So, what are the causes which leads to arterial blood pressure? Increase in cardiac output and increase in systemic vascular resistance will lead to arterial blood pressure. So, what are the major systems that regulates blood pressure? Arterial blood pressure is regulated by pressure sensitive neurons called baroreceptors. Where is the location of these baroreceptors? These baroreceptors are located in the aortic arch and carotid sinuses of heart. What is the function of them? These aortic arch and carotid sinuses send signals which are transmitted to the adrenal medulla of kidney by baroreceptors and in turn which causes increase or activation of catecholamines which are adrenaline and noradrenaline which in turn ultimately leads to increase of sympathetic activity thus by activation of alpha and beta receptors. Hope you guys remember that we discussed about alpha and beta receptor activation. Now, what are the functions of beta or alpha receptor? Where are they located and what is their function? So first of all, beta receptors. Increase of beta receptors will lead to increase of heart rate and increase of stroke volume because they are present in heart, in all parts of heart which will lead to increase of heart rate and increase of stroke volume which leads to increase of cardiac output. In priorly, we discussed that increase of cardiac output or increase of vascular resistance will lead to increase of blood pressure which is our main target. So, increase of blood beta block beta receptors will cause increase of heart rate, increase of stroke volume, increase of cardiac output and increase of blood pressure. This is the function of increasing of beta block receptors. Now, increasing of alpha receptors. Where are alpha receptors found? They are found in smooth muscles. So, these are vasoconstrictors. When vasoconstriction occurs, there occurs increase in vascular resistance, which also causes increase of blood pressure. So now, another part is renin. What is renin? From where it is taken, how it's used. Renin, we discussed about baroreceptors. These respond to fall of blood flow or blood pressure with the help of enzymes called renin. This renin can be secreted from kidneys. Increase of renin will cause increase of angiotensin 2. What is angiotensin 2? What are AC inhibitors? We will be studying those in next part. Okay. So increase in angiotensin 2. This product is a strong vasoconstrictor. Vasoconstriction over here is done in two ways. Constriction constricting systemic blood vessel and constricting renal blood vessel. Constricting systemic blood vessel will lead to increase in vascular resistance and constricting renal blood vessel will cause aldosterone. Increase of aldosterone which ultimately causes increase of sodium and water retention. When sodium and water is accumulated in body, this is the main source of cardiac output and blood pressure. So this occurs again. Increase of sodium and water retention will cause increase of cardiac output which again leads to increase of blood pressure. This is how renin is also comes under this classification. In next videos, next part, we will be studying what this should be done to decrease blood pressure. Here, increase of beta, alpha and renin causes increase of blood pressure. So as we know, inhibition of beta, alpha and renin will cause decrease of blood pressure. Come on friends, now let's move on to classification of antihypertensive drugs. There are six classifications. First, we will be studying or discussing about alpha-1 blockers. We saw increase in alpha results in increase of blood pressure. So, what are alpha blockers? What are the examples? There are two types of examples, doxazosin and prazosin. These both does the same work, which is blocking alpha-1 receptors, which are present in smooth muscles which results in decrease of systemic vascular resistance which ultimately will decrease the blood pressure. This is the work of alpha blockers. Now let's move on to beta blockers. Beta blockers, here they are classified into two types, selective and non-selective. 
as per their name their work is also same now selective beta blockers are adrenaline and metoprolol these beta blockers are present in heart so they inhibit the function of beta in heart which results in decrease of cardiac output selective blockage of beta 1 receptors in heart will result in decrease of cardiac output which our goal is achieved by decreasing the blood pressure now non selective the difference between selective and non selective beta blocker is this beta blocker in selective case acts only on beta 1 receptors but in case of non selective they act on both alpha and beta 1 receptors so they block, block both alpha and beta now these are labetalol and carbetalol labetalol which blocks beta 1 blockers and alpha 1 blockers which result in decrease of cardiac output and over there decrease of vascular resistance which will lead to decrease of bp simultaneously not only decreasing the beta and alpha they also decrease the function of renin by blocking the renin system simultaneously which will cause decrease of angiotensin 2 and at last decrease of aldosterone usually friends we see these two common terms in pharmacology indications and contraindications first of all what is indication and what is contraindication indication is a state in which if a person has particular situation these drugs should be given and contraindications are situations which if the patient has these types of symptoms or diseases it, these drugs should not be given so now let's move on to indications of alpha blockers benign prostatic hyperplasia which is non cancerous enlargement of prostate gland which occurs in males and contraindications which are allergies orthostatic hypotension or severe hepatic impairment abnormality in liver so what is orthostatic hypotension orthostatic hypotension is a condition in which a person feels dizziness or fatigue when he just uh, moves from rest position or sitting position okay now let's move on to the side effects side effects drowsiness these are common side effects which are drowsiness dry mouth which is also known as xerostomia headache nasal blockage blood vision and rashes now what are the indications contraindications and side effects of beta blockers indications stable heart failure post myocardial infarction high coronary artery disease risk now contraindications will be asthma acute heart failure and peripheral vascular disease what is peripheral vascular disease it might be a spasm or block in the blood vessels in the peripheral region and side effects side effects will be bradycardia and cns side effects these are cns side effects which are drowsiness dizziness nausea fatigue vomiting these comes comes under cns side effect classification okay and hypotension that's all about alpha blockers and beta blockers indication contraindication and side effects. Here comes the next classification of antihypertensive drugs. These are centrally acting adrenergic drugs. The work is by blocking the sympathetic activity of brain. These are two types of examples which are clonidine and methyl dopa. So, what is the function of clonidine? It selectively stimulates presynaptic alpha 2 receptors. These are not alpha 1 receptors, these are alpha 2 receptors thus providing negative feedback which decreases or reduces the production of catecholamines which we saw primarily this catecholamine reduction will lead to decrease of cardiac output and decrease of systemic vascular resistance which are major reason for increasing blood pressure so here decrease occurs so that also occurs decrease of blood pressure now methyl dopa these these are the same work as clonidine but though they are, they are same work but they cannot do it properly as they have to be converted to active metabolite form which is methyl nor epinephrine when they are converted into active metabolite form they do the same work as clonidine next let's move on to the side effects of centrally acting adrenergic drugs side effects of centrally acting adrenergic drugs are fatigue dry mouth drowsiness or sedation dizziness headache impotence constipation abnormality slow heart rate abnormally slow heart rate okay now let's move on to calcium channel blockers calcium channel blockers these are main thing we will be studying about this in repeated topics in the next coming videos okay so what are dihydropyridines and non dihydropyridines dihydropyridines 
We usually know there are n type calcium channels. For these n type calcium channels are present in vascular smooth muscles. Usually, what happens when calcium channel enters into smooth muscles? When there occurs an entry of calcium into these smooth muscles, there occurs resistance, which leads to increase in blood pressure. So, in turn, we should block the calcium channel, which selectively blocks calcium, L-type calcium channel or dihydropyrrhythmia, which causes decrease of BP. So, ultimately, the target is achieved. In case of non dihydropyrrhythmia of course, the work is same, but as per their name, they not only act on vascular smooth muscle, they also act on cardiac cells. So, non-selective inhibition of L-type calcium channels blocks both calcium cells on vascular smooth muscles as well as cardiac cells, which are SA and AV known, which we already know. Okay, by decreasing, which ultimately decreases myocardial contractility, decreases heart rate, and decreases conduction. Though we have studied that decrease of myocardial contractility can decrease cardiac output, but in this case that doesn't occur. The reason behind that is there is decrease in myocardial uh, contractility, it doesn't cause decrease of cardiac output because of reflex tachycardia. Tachycardia is increase in heart rate, as we know. Okay, so this reflex tachycardia occurs as a result of vasodilation, which is dilation of vessels, and there are some drugs. The drugs of dihydropyridines are amlodipine, philodipine, nicardipine, and nifedipine. And drugs of non dihydropyridines are dilithiazine, parathormone. So let's move on to the contraindications and indications and side effects of calcium channel blockers. We were discussing about the classification of calcium channel blockers. Now let's move on to indications, contraindications, and side effects. What are the indications? In these cases, they can be used like Recurrent stroke prevention. When continuous stroke occurs, these kind of calcium channel blockers can be used, like amlodipine, phenylodipine, nicardipine, and also diltiazem and varathrone. Effective in patients with angina or diabetes. What is angina? Angina is a condition which occurs when there is insufficiency of pumping of blood to the heart or heart muscles, which causes angina, which is pain in the chest. Okay. Now coronary artery disease. Coronary artery disease occurs when there is narrowing or hardening of coronary arteries. Okay. Now coronary spasm. What is coronary spasm? The term spasm means muscle contraction. Okay. So these spasm occurs in arteries which causes coronary spasm. Now diastolic heart failure. Filling of blood in the left ventricular uh, left ventricles which leads to decreased uh, pumping of outflow of blood which causes diastolic heart failure. Now what are the contraindications? In these cases, calcium channel blockers should not be used. Okay, Pre-existing cardiac conduction disorder, which is AV block and symptomatic hypotension. Symptomatic hypotension can also be called as postural or orthostatic hypotension. Next, it's acute coronary syndrome. Now, let's move on to side effects. Now, some common side effects are headache, constipation, rashes, nausea, flushing, edema, drowsiness. These side effects are well known to us. What is flushing? Flushing is the redness or red coloration of face of a person, mainly in the cheeks. So friends, now let's move on to next classification of antihypertensive drugs, which are diuretics. What is diuretics? How they help in hypertension? Diuretics are drugs which promotes diuresis. What is diuresis? Diuresis is increased or extensive production of urine. Excretion of urine is increased in body by three ways. Actually, when we discuss diuretics in deeply in next video, I will explain the every five classifications. And now, in case of antihypertensive drugs, we will be dealing with only three. Okay? First, it's loop. Second, it's thiazide. And third, it's potassium sparing. Now, what is loop diuretics? Loop diuretics example are furosemide. This is one of the main examples. How it works? By decreasing the sodium chloride reabsorption in kidneys. It occurs in the nephron, which is the structural, structural and functional unit of kidney, leading to diuresis. As I said to you, what is diuresis? It is the increased or extensive production of urine from body, which in turn causes less volume in vascular space, so less blood returns to the heart. Ultimately, which causes a decrease of cardiac output, which decreases blood pressure. Okay.
Okay. Now, thiazides. The example of thiazides are hydrochlorothiazide, which does the same work as furosemide, but they cost in only in initial levels. Okay. So, as they cost in initial levels, loop diuretics are used for um, chronic patients like chronic kidney disease patients. Okay. Now, glutathione decreases sodium chloride reabsorption in kidneys in initial level by initially decreasing intravascular volume, which decreases the cardiac output, which ultimately causes a decrease in blood pressure. Now, let's move on to potassium sparing. Okay. The examples of potassium sparing are triamterin and spironolactone. These causes increase in diuresis. Diuresis actually means increased or extensive production. This potassium sparing causes even more increase of diuresis. So just imagine how more urination will be there by either interfering with the sodium and potassium exchange or blocking the action of aldosterone. This potassium sparing will also lead to increase of hyperkalemia, which is increase in potassium content in our blood. Now friends, let's discuss about indications, contraindications and side effects of diuretics. First of all, in what cases these diuretics are used? In case of heart failure, high CAD risk which is coronary artery diseases which I have explained finally and in case of diabetes mellitus. Don't confuse with diabetes insipidus and diabetes mellitus, okay? Now contraindications, you should not use these diuretics in these cases. Gout. What is gout? It is a form of arthritis which is caused due to increased uric acid in blood. And next, pregnancy induced hypertension. The term which itself means hypertension caused due to pregnancy. Now, what are the side effects? Side effects are lethargy, skin rashes, nausea and dizziness. So friends, finally let's discuss about the final system or final classification of antihypertensive drugs which is RAS system which is expanded as renin angiotensin aldosterone system. First, I'll explain what is this mechanism. Next, we'll be talking about inhibitors, okay? First, we know what is renin. What is the function of renin? It is an enzyme which helps barrel receptors in signaling. It is secreted or produced by kidney. And next, angiotensinogen, which is found or secreted by liver, okay? This renin helps in conversion of angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1 and this angiotensin 1 is converted into angiotensin 2 by ACE which is angiotensin converting enzyme okay this case when angiotensin con converting enzyme converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2 causes increase of bradykinin okay now angiotensin 2 has two receptors which are angiotensin 1 receptor and angiotensin 2 receptor here we will be discussing about angiotensin 1 receptor this angiotensin 1 receptor causes increase of vasoconstriction and increase of aldosterone which causes hypertension. This should be reduced. So, this is the mechanism of RAS system. Now we will talk about the inhibition works. Okay? First, in this, renin should be inhibitor. As renin is the enzyme over here, it should be inhibitor. So, renin inhibitor, which is the example is aliskerin. Okay? And here, ACE. ACE inhibitor comes, which are examples are benazepril, Enalapril, Quinapril, Lamipril, and Capropril. This inhibition of ACE will break this bradykinin. So we need not much worry about it. Here, next, angiotensin 2, which has the receptors, angiotensin 1 receptor. This should be blocked. That comes ARB, which is angiotensin receptor blockers. These are losatin, Polysatin and candasin. This causes decrease of vasoconstriction and decrease of aldosterone, which leads to decrease in blood pressure. Okay, so this is the mechanism and inhibition process which takes place in the system. Now let's see the side effects of each inhibition. Renin inhibitor, which is alfkerin, has side effects of headache, heartburn, and dizziness. And this AC inhibitor has side effects of dry cough hyperkalemia and loss of taste. So that's about today. We have completed this video. For more videos, subscribe to our channel. And if there are any queries or any flaws, please do let us know in the comment section below. Thank you friends.